Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at this little four volt max Black & Decker screw gun. I just picked this up on Amazon to do some smaller, lighter duty jobs, uh, like put together some uh, furniture, baby furniture um, to be specific, and some outdoor furniture. And I needed something, I'll show you why I got this. I normally put everything together with the old Makita, but let me show you. Once you put everything together to get the actual tool on the end of Makita, it takes up this much room. Let me measure that. That distance that it's taking up inside of the work area is almost every bit of eight and a half inches. So you could see how using a smaller tool to get into those little uh, nooks and crannies is definitely beneficial. Now, if you guys have been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I am a Makita freak. I love the stuff. I love Milwaukee. I love Makita. I love DeWalt. So to, you know, to kind of, it feels like you're kind of going down in quality um, to go with the Black & Decker stuff, but I don't know. I have to say, I've been reading a lot of the reviews lately on this stuff, and it seems to be pretty decent as long as you're keeping it, you know, or using it for the application that, you know, it calls for. You're not going to be taking lug nuts off of this thing. You're not going to be building a deck with this thing, but for little odd jobs around the house, this thing might be the ticket. Now, just kind of, kind of explore in the package as we let the camera roll here, show you what you get for your $29 little basic charger light footprint it does not have the batteries that just pop out and pop in so this is going to be something that you're going to have to charge up and um, make sure it's charged before you do a project uh, let's see we got some of the features and specs on this thing I got it up on the monitor in front of me 180 rpm motor 40 inch pounds of torque Pistol grip to access tight areas, which is what I purchased it for. And a little LED on the front of it to help you see what you're working on. So, you know, this isn't the Black & Decker of yesteryear, like from our grandfathers. Um, they've gotten significantly cheaper in their manufacturing as have most of the tool companies. But I think that they, in the last few years, have stepped up their quality. It definitely is does not feel cheap in the hand. It has a very nice, uh, I'd say like an over mold rubbery uh, feel to the grip. And I got a pretty big hand and it, it fits well. Um, it, it definitely feels like you'll be able to get in there and, uh, and get some stuff tightened down. Now I'm not familiar with this chuck yet, so we're going to kind of learn as we go. Down here is where you charge it. Typical little micro USB style charger like an Android would use. Uh, let's see, it's telling you to recycle it. <laughs> They're already talking about when you need to throw it out down here, <laughs> recycle. Um, obviously, because it has a lithium ion battery in it. it. Says it has magnetic bit storage up here. We'll grab a bit, I don't have one in front of me. I'll grab a bit here real quick and throw it in there. But this really is is nothing more than just a regular cordless screwdriver. It's not meant to, like I said, you're not going to go out and start driving deck screws and decks all day long or uh, putting in drywall with this thing. Uh, you're going to be putting furniture together or, you know, assembling something with it. So let's see. I want to see if it takes these types of bits just like that. Now we were talking about eight and a half inches before with this style system, we've gotten it down to a seven and a half. So you lose a inch. I don't know, maybe close to eight. I mean, it's not that much different, which is surprising to me than using this. Uh, if we compare the head sizes on these things, it's, it's right in line with the Makita. Like I said, a half inch to an inch. Of variation so yeah I'd say it's about an inch so 
you know, what you, you gain with getting something small like this is obviously, you know, you don't have the big battery pack underneath it. So you can get it in tighter spaces pretty much wherever your hand goes, you're gonna get this in there. Um, so, you know, footprint wise, it is smaller than a, than a Makita Impact. The other drawback um, that I found when using like an Impact like this to put together furniture or uh, like an Ikea table or anything like that is sometimes you don't need all that heavy duty impact when you're trying to go with those real um, thin metal uh, screws that they send with a lot of the furniture these days. Uh, the, the heads want to round out real easy and when you get that impact going, not so good. So something nice and gentle like this to, to get the job done, I think is gonna fit the bill a little bit better. Sometimes, you know, over aggression on <laughs> driving screws and, and stuff like that is not always the best uh, road to take. So it's got standard, um, this is obviously forward. This is reverse. Um, the the if we're talking about build quality and, and just hand feel here, um, it, the switch is definitely plastic, fantastic kind of feel. It's uh, kind of feels more like a child's toy than it does a uh, a, a tool. Uh, you know, again, I'm using this as the as the benchmark. You know, the Makita has a very positive action, very reassuring, uh, aud audible sound and uh, real easy to kind of push and glide with your fingers. Uh, it seems as if this little Black & Decker does require a good bit of force and it does feel like over time, if you keep switching this thing back and forth, it will break. I could, I could see this or feel this just becoming completely stuck in one direction and then just being kind of freed up in there over time. The trigger is good. Um, it's not very satisfying. It's, it's just a typical, just single speed. There's no variabil variability with this trigger. Whereas the Makita, you can go slow. You know, you can ramp it up or ramp it down as you need to, you know, but again, I'm comparing a $29 screwdriver to a $250 professional impact gun. So uh, let's see how this thing works. I am a little bit disappointed in that. I thought that this, this shank length, this working body length was considerably smaller than the Makita, but man, you gotta give it, a, you gotta hand it to Makita for really engineering a nice tight little screw gun. I may also test the Bosch that they sell. Um, it's, in this, it's not similarly priced, but I'm gonna see about the Bosch and maybe the Milwaukee just to see. What I'm looking for is something real small that I can get in there, but also maintain a decent level of quality. It does have these finger rests in here, so when you're holding it with, you know, these, your, your three lower fingers, you get your index finger on here. Um, and this could help you kind of guide that head in nicely. So it does have this like indentation in here, which is nice. And yeah, there's just really not much else to say with this. Uh, it's, uh, looks like regular, um, like a rubber over mold here. This is obviously to protect when the, you know, I, I mentioned this too on my other videos, a lot of people don't know this, but if you take a look at my used and abused Makita, you'll see Makita does a really good job at isolating the touch points. So a lot of the work that you do with this, as long as you're not putting it down on belt clip side down, whenever you set this thing down somewhere, the, a lot of the professional grade tools, you know, this is not just all aesthetics. They wrap these things in, in, these, in this rubber and they make sure that all the contact points that these rest on are not gonna mar up the surface that you're working on. So for example, um, I did a deck uh, out of my dad's about a year or two, three, whatever ago. <laughs> and um, after, you know, you get all the deck planks in, you don't wanna screw them up and you're out there, you're doing, you know, you're, you're driving screws down if you do decide to get up, you know, provided you don't have the belt clip mounted and you lean on the tool to get up, it's putting the pressure of the rubber down on the substrate and not the hard plastic to mar it up. So the similarities with these is, is this one as well, is that all the high points on this have the rubber. So even here, so when this is sat down, it's it, the rubber is really gonna hit the surface instead of the hard plastic. So that's just something to note. But a lot of your professional tools, you'll observe that there's a lot of rubber bumpers 
anywhere that this thing can be rested down. So you can't, you don't scratch up your surface. So this is a, you know, made in China, uh, which is, you know, what a lot of them are. The sticker on here, it's already kind of peeling off. It's not very, you can see it's not very well stuck down. If, if this, you know, this kind of stuff matters to you, you know, that's something to note. It also looks like it has the date of manufacture on here saying 2020 uh, and then some sort of date code. So this is probably, if you do send this in for service, it's gonna tell the manufacturer when it was made. So that's something to note. It does have a considerable amount of uh, screws that assemble the two pieces of plastic together. This is obviously one side, this is the other. To service this, you would get in here, looks like with a Phillips head, uh, and take out the five screws that they have here. So just a little um, thing to note too, it does take these hex bits. These are your standard bits that go into any of your professional tools, it does take these styles, so it's gonna take pretty much everything. There's no chuck on this, so, uh, or no locking chuck on it, so like if you look again at a professional tool, if you're using, you know, and a lot of you guys already know this, but if you're using like a Makita and you go to try to pull this out, it's not gonna happen without you lifting up on this little collet lock and then pulling out. So it'll, it'll come down and snap and hold. The Black & Decker, um, doesn't have that. So it's using some sort of a magnet positive um, kind of retention in there. It does, it does feel like, yeah, some sort of a magnet back there that's keeping it in. So keep that in mind if you do have a tough screw and you go to pull out, well, obviously if you're not using one of those, you go to pull out of that tough screw, it may just lift right out on you. Um, you're gonna have to attach something to it to get it to pull out. That's just something to note. Uh, yeah, there's there's no lock on there at all. So Let's put this thing to use see what it can do and I'll give you my My yay or nay on it stamp of approval or not based on how it performs okay, So here we are finishing up the construction of this little chair and I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a close-up of this thing working So you guys can get a good idea I'm watching this thing through the camera here Nice and snug, just like that. It runs them in real nice. I like it. This it put the chair together nicely. Didn't give me any hiccups whatsoever. I could probably stand to charge that battery overnight get it nice and charged up it is a little bit weak but it is just out of the box and put together the chair so that's another thing to know it does come partially charged you guys saw me put it on the charger while we talked that's it but it did do a great job putting this chair together i got three more to do and the table i'm going to save those for off the video but i'll give you my final thoughts on this thing yeah trying to so here's exactly the reason why I'm putting together a kit like this. Every single time they give you a little tool with this thing and they expect you to sit here and do a half a turn at a time until you are completely installed. You have to do eight of these things. Be out here until Christmas time putting this stuff together. Or if you have strong fingers, you can kind of do it like this to a point where you get it tight pain in the neck and yes i do have a nice makita impact that i can use on this but the impact guns and the big drills are sometimes too much power for these tiny little hex heads so little little drill like this angle it up a little bit one hand in the camera nice and tight give it a couple of little turns like that it's good to go now like i did mention in my tabletop review of this it doesn't have a locking chuck it's just got a slip chuck with a magnet, so little things like that are gonna happen, but par for the course, it's fine. So the way I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just holding the trigger down, just using the torque on my wrist to give it a nice little snug turn. And if I cross check that against the tool that they gave me, that's exactly, that's as tight as I would go without going any tighter, snapping that, uh, that thread out of there. So that's pretty good right there. All right.
right, so this was able to put all those together. Absolutely no problem at all. I didn't think it would be, so I'm gonna move on to the chairs. So my final thoughts on this little guy, I like it. I give it my stamp of approval. I've only used it a short period of time, but I do think that this will become my go-to for small projects. Now, I said in the beginning of the video, it's not gonna replace your, your big drills. It's definitely not gonna replace any sort of a impact gun. And don't expect this thing to give you uh, you know, years of endless use and endless abuse. It's definitely going to be a, it's a small jobs kind of tool. Um, you can definitely feel it in the motor. Uh, it, it's good for what it was intended for, which is to get, um, to remove the, the tediousness of, of putting things together, putting a quick screw in the wall or a quick, uh, a quick piece of furniture together, uh, and give you a little bit of ease of use. Um, and take away basically, you know, what this basically is doing is taking away the need to use the stuff that comes in your furniture kits. So if this video helps you in any way whatsoever um, in making a decision or just understanding what you're spending $29 on, please uh, thumbs up the video and subscribe. It really does help me out. Uh, I wasn't paid by Black & Decker at all to do this video. Like like all my videos, I purchase the products that I review. They're never sent to me. Uh, I will never sell out uh, when it comes to that. It's a, it's a matter of, you know, if I'm spending my money on it, chances are you probably are spending your money on it. We all work hard for our money. Um, and it's hard to decipher the junk that's out there versus the stuff that could be, could be you know, reasonably good. Uh, so I do appreciate the subscribe, uh, and I'm trying to get to hundred thousand subscribers. So, you know, that's, that's no easy task these days on YouTube, but, uh, we're getting there. And, uh, if this did help you in any way, please uh, do subscribe and thumbs up and I'll get you in the next video later.